Oh, President Trump today putting Nancy Pelosi on blast, essentially blaming her for supporting the violent MS-13 gang. He also doubled down on the claim that the members are animals. Of course. Watch. I noticed recently where Democrats, Nancy Pelosi as an example, are trying to defend MS-13 gang members. I called them animals the other day, and I was met with rebuke. They said, they're people. They're not people. These are animals. All right, well, there you go. The president also announced he's working on a plan to reduce aid to countries who he says do nothing to stop MS-13 gang members from illegal, illegally entering the U.S. So should we expect Democrats to feign outrage, or can both sides agree that violent gang members who rape and murder people are pretty bad? Here with me now, from Fox News at Night, anchor Shannon Bream. Welcome back, Shannon. Always great to be with you, Kennedy. Fantastico. Uh, so let's discuss a little bit, because I, I think that there are plenty of fights you can pick with the president, and you really have to pick your poison and do it in the right way. Uh, Nancy Pelosi defending MS-13 gang members, I want to pull her aside and say, Nancy, they're not going to vote for you. There's nothing you're going to say to this group of people. There's nothing that, that you can, you can't charm your way into their personal ballot boxes. I mean, it's a real tough sell. But yeah, you have people drawing these battle lines over it uh, because you have a number of Republicans and you heard the uh, deputy attorney general with the president today saying, listen, there are all kinds of loopholes out there that are making it easier for MS-13 to come here and to stay here and to get away with things. And even when they are caught, sometimes these catch and release programs, uh, there are loopholes that can be closed. So my question is, can members of Congress get it together, as you said, to have some kind of bipartisan agreement about this? Um, I got to tell you, I've been doing some prep because we're having one of those members on our show at 11 o'clock tonight. And I've been looking at what they could possibly do. I've been reading these accounts, as I'm sure that you have, and many of your viewers have seen, these accounts of the kinds of crimes that MS-13 has committed. And it is absolutely revolting. I literally had to put down the research oh, packet, yeah, and I thought no, to you're... myself... I mean, it doesn't matter what party you are. This is not partisan. This is not political. This exactly. Is and, and if there, there, and there have to be areas of agreement on immigration because we, we have to fix our broken immigration policy. We have to encourage good people to come here and we have to keep bad people out. It's really as simple as that. And this is one of the few areas where people can come together and say, these are not the kind of people we want in our country. We don't want them in our prisons. We don't want them harming children. And the, the ways that they dismember or beat uh, and kill, especially teenage boys who aren't affiliated with mm -hmm. the gang. I mean, it's it's really disturbing. So you you know, it's it's okay to say these are the kind of people we want to come out. Uh, we don't want in the country. That's number one. Number two is you don't want Republicans uh, to be tarred with the perception that they are saying that all immigrants, illegal or otherwise, mm -hmm. are like MS-13 members, because that is not true. This is a very small, violent, horrific minority of people who try to come into this country and do awful things in order to, uh, you know, terrorize people. And they're really no different than terrorists, that mentality. But that is not the majority of people who are coming here to seek a better life. Yeah, and when people speak about them, including the president, they have to be overly clear about that because there are many out there in the mainstream media who are not going to take them uh, at face value. They're going to want to read more into it. They're going to run with it uh, if something's taken out of context. But it is incumbent upon the speakers who talk about MS-13 to make sure that that is abundantly clear because you do have people like we have this quote uh, from Think Progress today saying this about the president getting tough. It says Trump has used looming fears of the MS-13 violence and other similar incidents to push a flagrantly racist immigration platform. It goes on to say that he's targeting people of color, Muslims, all kinds of things. You can't give them any ammunition. You just absolutely, as you said, have got to be clear when you talk about this. Absolutely. And those are also people. And, and that's what's so tough about immigration. Those are also people. They don't want a solution to the problem. Uh, they they still want as much divisiveness as possible. They think it benefits their side when really when we're at an impasse like that, we're not going to fix some of the immigration problems that we have. And when there is so much confusion at the top, at the federal level, um, that's when states start reinterpreting for themselves immigration policy. And that's when you see sanctuary cities and sanctuary states. And it all gets 
very confusing. I, I think that this is a warm and loving nation. I think that uh, by and large, Americans see the best in people who come here and want to live here. And we have to move forward with uh, that kind of a position so we fix what's wrong instead of, you know, playing this trench warfare for the next two generations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the key to this whole thing, as you mentioned, the cities and the states doing their own things with sanctuary um, policies. And then, of course, this administration suing a number of them. You have numerous court battles. And the biggest one of all, of course, is still pending right now at the Supreme Court. We're waiting any day for the opinion on Travel Ban 3.0. And these folks say this is a perfect example of showing that the president doesn't just care about immigration and keeping out bad guys, that he wants to lock down this country, lock down the borders to anybody who's not like him. Uh, and that's what Travel Ban 3.0 is about. Uh, so there's so much political heated rhetoric that gets involved with policies um, that it makes it really tough to have a good, substantive, reasonable conversation. But I'm hoping, and I'm sure you are too, that people across the aisle can have that conversation so that we can get some of these dangerous loopholes closed, because I think we all agree that that is a positive thing to do. All right. You are uh, one of the brightest legal minds in all of broadcasting, and I'm so glad I get to talk with you. Shannon Breen, thank you so much. My privilege. Very good.